Hello, I'm Professor Smalley, and this is the course introduction video for Math 2413 Calculus 1 for the summer term, mini term May 2018. So, first thing I'm going to do is we're going to come to my Lone Star here and look into how to get into the course. Uh, now, if you are new to D2L, they do make you take some sort of little introductory thing, test. Everybody tells me it's easy. You have to get 80% on it, whatever. I think they want to see if you can just answer simple questions before you can access the course. But you should be able to get into my Lone Star with no trouble. So there's a couple of different routes you can take here. Well, if you go to my Lone Star LSC online, but I'm going to show you uh, a different way here. Come over here to LSC online right up there at the top and click on that, you know, which, which will take you straight to D2L without having to, you know, go into my Lone Star class login. There we go. Alternate login. I don't know that other, that always works well for me. Username and password. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and uh, log out of my Lone Star because if not, there's going to be a pop-up every few minutes warning me it's going to log me out so we don't need it, anything from there right now or I don't need to show you anything all righty so let's see of course your your different your view is going to look a little different I'll just go to student mode here for a minute I'll probably go back um, go to my home should have shown a All right, let me go to back to faculty because I thought it was going to show a big green start button. Maybe when I click on your class, it will. I'm just so used to doing this as a faculty member, so obviously you won't see all this stuff in your courses uh, unless you're taking a bunch of calculus courses at once. Now let me see. Wow, oh, so there we go. That's what I had to be into this particular course before that comes up. So there's you'd have a start button here I'll probably switch back to faculty mode here in a second but anyway the main things you're concerned with in D2L are the uh, content grades and assessments I don't, we don't need any of this communication now we're not having any chats or discussions or unless you know somebody wants me to start a discussion or something I guess I could uh, email, I just check mine through regular Lone Star email because anything in D2L will come to my Lone Star email. Uh, speaking of which, if you're using something like Yahoo or something like that, or something, uh, you might want to email me through D2L because uh, if not, it's going to go to my spam folder and then I got to get out of my spam folder. Anyway, we don't want to do anything that causes uh, that much of a delay to get to me. Because uh, it's such a quick moving course in four weeks. So if it, you're using something like you know, Yahoo's or sometimes certain EDU's will do it. But Yahoo.com always does. So you can just uh, email me through uh, D2L and then I'll get it immediately because it goes right to my Lone Star email. So, well, I guess I don't know what the start button does. I'll just click it and hopefully it won't blow anything up. Well, that's beautiful takes us right here to the content so this is where the uh, course this video I'm doing right now will be located right here and let's bring up the syllabus and talk about the syllabus obviously you can read this and add quest ask questions later so sometimes I'll probably go too too slow through this so I'm going to go a little quicker uh, down there at the bottom you can look at it through here I just want to show you this and so any files that I have posted, you know, you can save and keep or whatever, download it and save it. But we're, that way we can see the entire screen. All right, so let's see. So if there's anything that's unclear, just please feel free, free to send me an email. All right, usually I have some sort of typo here. So far, so good. Distance learning, no classroom, course section. 
Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Now, let's start right here. Course materials. Now, the official book that Lone Star University Park is, is using um, is called University Calculus Early Transcendentals, 3rd Edition. Forgot to put a picture in there. Haas, Ware, and Thomas. Uh, you can use any textbook that you like, since there will be no assignments that are required specifically from a te this textbook. Now, if you wanted my Math Lab code to, to you know, use this book and access its resources, even though there's nothing, you know, you have to do in there specifically, uh, if you want to look at their videos in addition to my videos and stuff like that and, and try some things, play around with it, there's the access code. But let me repeat, this is not required. Now, like I said, if you have another book or... I have a book sort of hidden in here uh, that you can use in D2L. I needed to rename it to sort of disguise it a little bit. But if you come down here in the folder with a syllabus, come down here where it says other resources. I'm going to leave it sitting right down there. You open that up. And then is, that is a previous edition of Larson book that's out of date now that we used to use. Now the notes uh, in my sections, the section numbers match this book, but that doesn't mean you still couldn't use some other book or source. You do what you would just have to figure out based on content, you know, the, the name of the section, where it would be in your book, sort of thing like that. So, but that is here for you to use. All right, so I want to show you that. So you have options there. So you don't have to go out. And, I don't know what a my math lab code is. I'm going to guess it's around maybe, I don't know, $99, $89, or something. I don't know. I don't think, you, I mean, if you want to do that, I would suggest that before going and buying the, the full textbook. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. And of course, the problem is we try to order some cheap book online. Uh, the time for it to get here is such a short class, but. But if you want that uh, that book, that's fine. Or like I said, anything you got, it's fine. So, okay. Uh, graphing calculators is, is allowed, although I'll put calculators on a list, or I may add things to this list that you cannot use in the testing center. So if you got something like a TI-83 or TI-84 or one you could borrow, that would be your best bet. TI-84, 84 CE or any of that, you're okay with that. There's no chance that's going to be on the on the list. I just generally, I'm looking for calculators to ban that can do the algebraic part of this content. I don't care about graphing and stuff like that. That's all right. Um, the numerical capabilities, but I don't like ones that have algebraic capabilities. Uh, okay, well, clearing memory from a calculator, well, that, that only works for a face-to-face -face class. So I have videos. Um, I'm just mentioning Khan Academy is a good website for other videos. If you don't like mine, mine will tie along with my notes, which I'll show you shortly. Um, if you happen to be using this Larson book, there's a website called www.calcchat.com that you can look at, see how it's sort of like if you had a printed solution manual to the odds in the book. You know, it's like having that where you, but you don't need the printed, you can look at it online. So. That's a good source. Let's come down here. Homework. I got a practice list. I don't uh, associate with that Larson book. I don't have one for the uh, the, the University of Calculus book. And there's a good chance that book's only going to be going one more year anyway. So I don't want to get too invested in creating a list for that book. So just kind of, you know, I don't ask super, super hard problems. So if you just kind of stay and if you book, just to kind of stay in the beginning, you know, toward, maybe toward the middle. I don't get too creative. Um, if you're just trying to pick problems at random to practice, and you can see what kind of problems, the level of problems that I do in my notes are also good, and my exam reviews and things like that. So you don't have to worry about super, super hard ones. Um, now we have these take-home quizzes. 
that uh, there's 10 of them uh, and um, the lowest four are dropped and the best six will be what's called your quiz grade, the average of those best six. So uh, whatever that is. So obviously if you have six 100s, it's going to be an average of 100. Now I, I mentioned here, I debate on whether to change the name. They're not quizzes in the sense of uh, that you, you take them in live real time like you will in an exam. Uh, and I'll go to D2L in a minute and show you all this after I run through the syllabus first. But the um, you have a PDF file that has all the questions. So your your goal your job is to work them out, and then before the proper deadline, you go into D2L just to submit your answer. So you'll have the that's, that's how it works. You don't take you don't open the quiz until you're ready to submit your answers. You're not taking it. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you all that in D2L here in just a minute. Um, we have three, uh, well, <laughs> in-class exams, should say proctored exams. Uh, I didn't always have some sort of error in there somewhere. Maybe I'll fix it by the time I post this, but um, proctored exams. And then the final exam, which is also a proctored exam. And the first three exams, you're allowed to use an 8.5 by 11 sheet of notes. One side only. You can put on there anything you want, anything you think you need. Um, formulas, examples, whatever you want. The final exam, you're then allowed to use both sides of the sheet. Now, I mentioned the final exam will be, okay, here's the deadline, but I'll show you the, the dates for all the exams here shortly. All right, let's see how we get a grade in this course. That's probably important. We have, uh, not counting the final exam, we have exam one, exam two, exam three, and the quiz grade. So it's the best three out of those four count. I've seen some situations, usually if someone's doing really well, their exams will count and not the quiz grade. But for most people, you should really, your goal should be to really, really focus and get the highest quiz score you can because that way you can offset one of these exams. So sometimes students will ask me, you know, is the lowest exam dropped? Well, I don't like to answer it that way because drop sort of means that, you know, it, it, it nothing has to replace it. Uh, so I always answer that, but it would have to be replaced by the quiz grade. Most students kind of mean that when they say it, but I always try to explain that, well, yeah, it's dropped, but only, in other words, you can't, Drop an exam and then not do the quizzes is what I'm saying. Um, but if the quiz grade was the lowest, like say, let's say your exams went 100, 100, 100, and 90 for the quizzes, the quiz grade would be dropped. So it's the best three out of those four. So really focus on those quiz grades. Now the final exam, that has to count. So everything's right, uh, weighted equally at 25%. So the best three here will be 25%. So nothing too crazy there. So It'll be just the average of your best four, uh, best three scores here with the final. Oh, I need to fix that. That's the grade scale or whatever that got down to the. That just <laughs> that's just that's other than just being cosmetic. It kind of bugs me. That's all right. Um, all right. So I might not go through. Okay, you can read all of this. Some of this I've already said, some of it, because I want to jump back in D2L and show you how to navigate your way around there. Introductory video, which is what you would, you know, if you're listening to this, is what you'd be doing right now, is watching the video. Uh, yada, yada. Oh, here we go. Okay. Focus on the quizzes and the exam reviews. You know, that helps you prepare for the exam. Speaking of which, uh, if, if I can remember, I'll put this in a written announcement, but I'll go ahead and say it verbally. The uh, exams are going to be 20 questions each, so don't freak out when you look at the review and see it's got like 60 questions on it. That's strictly practice. You're not, you know, you're not submitting that. Do as many as you think are appropriate. Uh, the, each of the three exams have 20. You have like a three-hour time limit for those, and the final has 30, and you have a four-hour time limit for that. All righty. And they're going to be multiple-choice exams. Now, I'll have a grading scale that I will announce as we go that will be um, adjusted for partial credit. So it's a formula I use so where your actual score is going to be higher than what the percent is going to be. For example, I, I, I think it's something like this. Like, say, if you made 80%, that might actually turn into 88 or something like that. But you, you'll see 
when I post the formula. But the main thing is to do the best you can and then know that I'm going to be adjusting the grades. So here are the deadlines. Uh, these dates are, it's the Tuesday of the second week. It's the Wednesday of the third week and then thir the Thursday of week four and then Saturday of week four. All the material will be included in the first three exams. So there's not anything new after exam three that would be on the final. So the final is just kind of a wrap up of everything. So you more be just kind of going back over everything before the final. Now, if you're taking your exams in the Lone Star College Testing Center or a, another testing center that I would approve, although I, which you know during long semesters that works out pretty well, but I'm not sure uh, if different colleges and universities are, will have their testing centers open in May or not. I don't know. But anyway, just, just, just for now, let's say Lone Star College Proctored Testing Centers. The exams are automatically sent out to every Lone Star College Testing Center. That's a common question I get. Well, you know, you're, you know, you're based out of University Park, but can I take my test at Kingwood? Absolutely. Any, they'll be automatically sent to any Lone Star Testing Center. Your responsibility is to verify the uh, hours that they're open for the day, you know, that thing, so you can allow yourself the you know, your full amount of time, you know, so you want to, on, on the regular exams, you want to get there at least three hours before they close, and the final, you want to get there at least four hours before they close. Now, keep in mind, another thing people get confused on this, too, if you're taking the testing center, these are deadlines. I've already had a couple of people email me about this, like somebody said they need to be gone before the, either the 9th or the 7th, or whatever date it was, it doesn't matter, but the point being is, could they accelerate their way through the course? And if you're using a testing center, yes. So these are deadlines. That means these are the last day you can take the exam. You can take any one of them early if you want to. If you feel, I'm not necessarily recommending that, but if somebody wants to accelerate themselves through the course, you can go right ahead. Same thing for those quizzes. When I show you in D2L, they all have due dates, but they don't. Uh, but they're all open now, so you can theoretically start working on it whenever. So. Um, now, however, Proctor U, which I'm going to use Proctor U, I'm going to send the test to the Lone Star Testing Center and Proctor U. If you're going to use Proctor U, you can only take the exam on these specific dates because I'm not real sure with them yet as far as I don't know how secure it is. Like if someone, if they make you destroy your exam, you know, is it really going to be destroyed or could somebody pass information on to someone else? I'm just kind of unsure about the security. Long, the testing center is no problem. If the test is going to be on the computer, you're going to submit your answers and that's it. And you won't be allowed to, to, to take anything out with you. Um, so, yeah, so that's unless I decide, unless I make a revision to that. But plan on it being only on the days of the uh, exams. And I'll talk about Proctor U when I go into the exam dates in D2L. I'll talk a little further about um, so I'll get them the information. So if you're going to use that, kind of get with them to, so you can kind of get a feel for how they work. All right. So, okay, probably. All right. Got to go. Okay. The rest of that's just whatever. Academic calendar. All right. Lone Star policies in general. So I think that takes care of the syllabus, which obviously you can read that. And if I miss anything that you would like clarification on, Please drop me an email. All right, let's go back to D2L. So we're going to look how we navigate our way around here. So we found the syllabus. Oh, let's see. Look what we got over here. I'll come back to this first column in a second. But let me start with a few other things. Lecture notes. Um, you see they are grouped by exams. Um, exam 1. Exam 2, Exam 3, I think there's one more thing I need to revise on this one for Exam 2. This may slightly change. No, I think it's okay, actually. Never mind. I thought I, thought I didn't see something there. Oh, this, this is going to go. I'm going to get rid of this right now, so um, we're not doing that. But anyway, so it's nice and organized. You don't have to worry about 
hey, you know, what, what material is going to be on exam one? Bam, there it is. Right there. So that, that's how so that's how you know exactly what's going to be on each exam. You know, I'm not going to really come up with a calendar for such a short term, like how much should you cover each day, but uh, yeah, I would step on it. You know, a couple sections a day would be good, you know, just, just get after it and get after it quick. So these are all grouped nice. That's old pre-cal notes. I don't know. Come down here. We've got exam reviews. Um, i got some PDF files. We have sample problems for exam one. That's like the original file where you can try them out. Then there's solutions. Now, the sample problems have answers, but the solutions, for example, show me, you know, writing stuff. You know, how I, some of, okay, that one didn't require much work. But anyway, some of these don't require much work here, but, but it shows how I would have done it, in other words. So, yeah. So, obviously, I think, you know, that's not the best way to study is just look at my solutions. That's no good. The best way to study is to try to practice and do as many of them you can, but then now you know you have that as a resource. There it is, one, exam one, exam one, exam two, exam two, three and three, and the final and the final. So there's all those. I have videos explaining my written solutions. So that you have assistance right there. So if you don't want to read those solutions or something you get stuck on, of course you can go to the video. I have them grouped by um, different blocks of problem numbers. I was having some issues a while back making these videos, and boy, and then I'd, I'd really get frustrated if I'd do a bunch of work and it would crash. So I just started doing a little bit at a time. That way, when it wouldn't if it crashed, it wouldn't be so bad. Plus, I'd get tired of talking too. So you can just kind of go to one. Like, say, you look at one of my written solutions. I'm not sure what he did there. Let me let, let me hear him explain it. And you can go right to where you want. There are YouTube videos, so you can drag along and move to wherever you want. We see like exam one. Okay, exam one, I, I did it all for that one. But exam two, I think, is where I started having troubles. So that's when I went to that method, exam three. And there's the final review. It's grouped in a bunch of blocks of 11s here, it looks like. So you have those. So it's, it's just me explaining my worked out solutions. I have my own lecture videos that correspond to those sections. Um, man, they're not exactly... If I get a chance, I'll, I'll maybe I'll maybe I'll organize these these by exam, but that's okay. It's not like there's five thousand files. I'm confident in your ability to scroll through these and find which one you need. Yeah, I may or may not do that, but but they're all there, so you can go and they're kind of in order. I think they're I think they are in order actually. They're just not in separate folders like the notes are. They're not you know each. Okay, that's all right. I may not do anything to that. So there you have those, my lecture videos. So you can work with those, start with those. Um, and then you can practice problems if you, what, uh, like I said, if you, if you, you know, want to use that uh, PDF file, that book I provided, I have a suggested practice list of that somewhere, I think. Um, yeah, well, I'll show you. That's back in that syllabus folder. Or if you use, you know, if you're using some other source, you can just find practice problems there. Quizzes. So let's take a look at these. So there they are. And they're even telling you which ones go to which exam. This last one just means it's kind of re it's a review, basically. It means everything. It's coming from different places. Um, that's why it's after exam three. It's kind of over everything. So they're grouped. They tell you what sections they're on. They tell you based on uh, what review it's on. Um... So there you go. Now you know which one. So what you do is you click on this. So you work these out. See, they're all multiple choice. And then you decide what your answers are going to be. All right. That's what I mean. These quizzes are already available, so they're more like homework sets or whatever. So who knows? Uh, but then, you, then I'll, I'm about to go show you how to enter them here in a second. So, but there's all the files. So those are already there. Why are there? Why do I have two of everything? I must have double copied the course or something. Okay, well I'm gonna have to, 
I'll have to clean some of that up later then. So I don't know what happened here. All right, I'll look at I'll look into that. But there's not there's not two sets of quizzes. Trust me, there's just the one set of quizzes. So I'll have to clean that up for you. Um, yeah, I must have imported twice or something. All righty. So this is showing you, and I'll I'll go to show you. So here we go. We go to assessments, quizzes. Okay, very important. And um, you do not open this quiz up and start it till you're ready to submit all of your answers. You know, you might be used to doing stuff with my math lab homework where you just kind of go in and out, do a little at a time. But this one, just enter all 10 of them. One thing you need to watch for, I don't do this on purpose, I have no idea what causes it, and I have not figured out how to stop it, is sometimes the answers, when you look at the quiz, they they change orders. But the problems can't change because they're the same problems in, on that on that file. But I don't know why, but sometimes they'll scramble the answers. So let's say uh, you work a problem and you know the answer is 2.5. And let's say it was letter A on the quiz file. But you come down here, they use bubbles instead of letters. But let's say it's the fourth bubble down, which would have been letter D, and you see 2.5. You still pick 2.5. So don't blindly go through. That's why you want to go through there. You got to look at each question. Don't go, you know, automatic A, B, C, A, B, blah, blah, whatever, because they might not be in the same order when you bubble them, but the values will be the same. So we go in here. We click on this. Uh, oh, it's, okay. I got to go look at it from your point of view here. So if I want to go look at it from student view, because it won't. Let me do it. All right, let's change my role for a second here. All right, click on start, which I guess just takes you to course content. But anyway, back over to the quizzes. Um, so you come over here, there's quiz one. You see, you come down here and go start quiz. Okay, you have one hour to do that. You just have you just have to open it up before the deadline. Then you have one hour. So there's no reason. You know, that's why you can go slow. One hour, not actually to work math problems. It's one hour just to submit ten answers. But like I said, you still kind of want to go a little slow because of the scrambling. So I'm gonna click start quiz, and I'm gonna not look at these. I'm not gonna. I'll at least get this one right, so I'll make a zero. Oh, see, I gave you a free answer. <laughs> well, whatever. I'm just going to start clicking random buttons here. You can save each question as you go, but then I think you can save and submit at the end. So my point is you will not be going this fast when you're taking the quiz. This is just strictly a demonstration. Yes, please don't go this fast because watch for the... Oh, I was wrong earlier. Excuse me. It does put A, B, C, D. Yeah, I was right about the bubbles being there, but it also puts a letter there too. Okay. My fault. I thought that was... Okay. I didn't realize that. So, But like I said, you know, A on the quiz might be right on the PDF, but the answer might have moved to D here. All right, so I think I did badly on purpose here. I'm going to save all responses. So I guess you can save them one at a time. Go to Submit Quiz. Submit Quiz. And I got 20%. I'm a whopping failure on this quiz. <laughs> well, you only get one attempt at these, so be careful. So that's okay. I guess being the instructor, I can just change my grade if I don't like it. So there you go. But let me go back to it. Actually, one thing I want to show you, though, is important. And I have a file. I'll show you where it is in case you forget this. You can open up the PDF file. It shows you how to do this. Now, I set the quizzes. Uh, 
to be able to view them, your results. It'll show you your grade. You can view the results one hour after this deadline right here. So it'll be available at midnight on each of these. And a lot of people get confused, and I can see why you would get confused. Because you, you think you go, you want to see your quiz? Oh, and you can't, yeah, you, you can't look at, even if you submit the quiz early, you cannot, no one can view it until the one hour after this deadline. So you have to just wait and see. You'll know your score. But to view your quiz, you think you might just quick on, click on that button again, but that will not do it. That is, that is no good. Um, it, 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 that's only to enter quizzes. So see, it's not telling you, it's just telling you minimal information. Like I said, I have a file I'll show you. You click on this drop down arrow and it's submissions. That's how you actually look at the quiz. And then you, I'm not going to open it up, but there it is. Then you click on attempt one and that's how you see it. So that's a, that's a confusing topic. So hopefully that'll help save you some agony right there. Now, one thing very important about these quizzes, I'm not going to extend the deadlines. You know, we're moving too fast here. You got to get these done by these deadlines. Now, keep in mind, there are 10 quizzes and I'm dropping four of them. Now, the only exception I would make is, is if it was a legitimate D2L error, not if it was your own personal computer or Wi-Fi. So you might not, might not want to wait until 11 because if something's messed up, you know, of course, you can always probably do it via your phone or via something or I, I wouldn't use this deadline. I'd do it a little earlier because, you, you know, you can call somebody if you're willing to give them your password and let them uh, log in and do it. So you're on your, you're at your own risk unless it's, unless it's a legitimate, the D2L would tell me if there was a shutdown, I think. Well, if not, I'd, I could find out. But if it was their problem, then obviously I would rectify that. So I'm not extending these quiz dates. So you see them, there's a date, there's the time, and then they're in the D2L calendar, which I'll show you. I got them spread out a little bit so, so you see the first three, and then there's the exam one, and four and five are due before exam two. You see these exams have this little padlock over here. That means they are locked by password. Those you can't open up, but the quizzes you can. But don't open the quiz, like I said, until you're ready to submit your answer. So here they're all lined up. You got all your due dates right here. So you can see everything. So yeah, so you know, like I said you you know this. That's why you want to do the best on your quiz as you can in case there is some situation where you didn't submit one or something like that. Don't put yourself in a desperate situation where the last four have to all be good. Even if you said, for example, let's say if you made 600s in a row, I would actually practice on some of these other ones just, just to help you prepare for exams. Even if you don't want to submit them, they make excellent practice problems. Well, then you can submit them. But once you make six 100s, you can make, you know, four 20s in a row, and your quiz average will be 100. So it wouldn't matter if you submit them or not. All right, so we must abide by these deadlines here. Now, let me mention something about this exam. This is more mainly, and I'll, if I, I'll put that in writing also. Obviously, testing centers aren't going to be open until 11.59 p.m. at night. This is more like if you're using ProctorU. Now, when I, uh, I've had issues with ProctorU, I think I'm starting to figure it out now. But net, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the deadline for maybe like 10 p.m. That's probably more than enough time. But it means your appointment deadline. You need to make your appointment deadline by 10 because it takes them a while to get things going. So I made that mistake is making the proctor time the same as the dead, deadline the first time I did this, and that was a big snafu because I forgot it takes them a while to get set up. I guess I have to look around your room on the computer and stuff like that. So that way, if the appointment's at 10, whatever they've got to do to get things ready, then when they come to open the test with 11.59 deadline, I'm just allowing enough cushion there um, that uh, they, they won't run into the, you know, test deadline itself, you know, from getting ready and everything. So I want to put that, in, I'll put that in writing. I'm, I'm sure I'll remember to do that. But so 10, make your appointments by 10 p.m. at the latest. Now, I just said you have to do it that day. You can do it obviously earlier in the day. I'm just saying the latest. I'll probably set it up for open, the exam to open up at, you know, like 7 or 8 a.m. or something if you want to do it. Probably 8, probably 8 a.m. Don't know what window it's open when you contact them. They'll be able to look and see, oh, you can make your appointment between this time and this time. 
All right, so there's how the quizzes and the exams work here. So let's go back to this. And run through, let's see, a few other things that are in uh, that list of stuff. And content. Okay, here's a PDF file that tells you, you know, how to enter the quiz. I won't worry about opening it up. Yeah, and here's the one I was just showing you. This is right there if you forget. That, uh, that, that's the file that shows you to click that right drop down arrow after the quiz submission is available. Yeah, so that's a handy little file to refer to. I have two sets of homework lists here, but I'm, I'm only, I mean, if you have somebody, if you just happen to be about fluke using a large intent, uh, but I don't have that PDF file available. But this, uh, so that's just kind of, you know, remember, you can just go through here and look around here. Now, there's a, oh, there's a link to that couch chat I was telling you. Um, testing center info. I don't know what this is. This might be outdated. I may have to either rectify that or something, see if that's the right. Well, I'm going to click on it, see what it says. Not going to hurt anything. Okay. It's fine. Just takes you to testing center. So you can find, probably go to each testing center to verify their hours. I would also call to, oh, there, there it is. Oh, right there's each number. I would call because you never know if they post out. Here we go. You never know if these are accurate. Um, I think they should be for May, but yeah, be sure to double check on whatever day you're going. And keep in mind, different days might be different deadlines. So, you know, you might think one time you went on Monday to take a test and they close at eight, you know, and then when obviously you went a different day, like for example, Friday, they shut down early. Uh, same thing with Saturday. So just be sure to double check those. You need to pay attention to that kind of stuff. So that's good. That link's good. Um, so let's see. Now this will obviously will be, obviously the final exam will be quick and this is spring of 18, but still the one I'm going to use. Now I don't do this for each of the irregular exams, only for the final to help reduce your studying a little bit. Um, the final, you just want to work through the review and try to, you know, gather as much as you can. But here, I'm basically listing out every type of problem and then what, what section it's coming from from the Larson book. So that means when you look at that review, which has like about 70-something problems, you only have to focus on the ones that are on this list. I do that because that way I use a big, giant review. I can actually change things out from semester to semester. I can pick something else that's on that review list. So don't feel like you have to work the entire 70 problem review. You're only going to be looking for ones that fit this list. So you see this this has 30 questions. Like I mentioned earlier in the regular exams, we only have 20. All right, so I need to clean some stuff up in here with all the extra repeat stuff. But anyway, I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, so this video, you know, like I said, you always refer back to this when you need to because it answers a lot of questions, but then, you know, other things I might have missed. Please feel free to contact me and good luck as you proceed through this delightful four-week adventure. Thank you.